what's up guys today we're going to be taking a look at the emotiva rmc1 and the xpa dr3 before we get into it if it's your first time here we discuss all things audio and video from new movies to new audio and video gear like this home theater system so if you haven't already tap the subscribe button for new weekly videos the rmc1 is a 16 channel processor that's expandable up to 28 channels it supports both immersive audio formats Dolby Atmos and DTSX. Every channel in the system is fully differential, so it makes perfect sense to pair it up with the DR3 3 channel amplifier, which also has fully differential inputs. Having differential inputs and outputs will give you the cleanest connection free of any noise. The RMC1 retails for 5 grand, while the DR3 retails for $2,200 at the time of this video. Now, in case you missed the unboxing, we'll go ahead and run it again. Inside the RMC1 box, we get some documentation. The calibration microphone, the microphone cable, the remote control, which feels like a five pound brick of steel. This is how you make a remote control. Here we have an accessories box with a tabletop mic stand inside. Another box with the power cord, some batteries for the remote. And we also get some antennas and a USB stick. The RMC1 retails for $5,000 at the time of this video. If you couldn't tell, this is a premium device. Up front, it's got the classic Emotiva aesthetics. The power button is bottom center and the multifunction knob is in the middle, flanked by two OLED displays. I'm not sure if they're 4K OLEDs though. Hmm. On the bottom left is a 3.5mm headphone jack, a USB input, and a 3.5mm input. Taking a look around back are all the goodies. There are fully balanced XLR outputs for all 16 channels. If you need RCA pre-outs, you're gonna need some adapters. Here are eight HDMI inputs along with two HDMI outs with support for ARC. There's a few analog RCA inputs next to a set of fully balanced inputs. We have coax and optical digital audio outs and some digital audio ins. There's a bunch of triggers, an ethernet input and a USB input as well. Moving over to the DR3 amplifier, you'll see it looks just like Emotiva's other amps with the biggest difference being what's inside. The DR3 retails for $2,200 at the time of this video. It's a three channel amplifier rated at 450 watts per channel with all channels driven into eight ohms. Around back, you'll see that we have binding posts for all three channels. Depending on if you're running RCAs or XLRs, all you have to do is flip this switch. For setup, I'll be using the XPA3 amplifier powering my front three channels along with Rotel amps and a Panasonic UB9000 4K player in my dedicated theater. Now let's take a look at some of the menu options and I'll give you some of my thoughts on their performance. First thing we're going to do is check the firmware. We're on 1.4 but there is a 1.6 beta. Download it onto a USB stick and click confirm. This whole process takes about 8 minutes. When it's done, it'll shut off. The first boot up will take about a minute. Now let's go back in and see if the update went okay. And as you can see, it now says 1.6. Okay, now let's drop into the main zone settings. Here you can switch inputs directly from the menu. For Dolby loudness management, you can choose to set dynamic range compression on, off, or on auto. Under trims are independent levels for each group of speakers. Keep in mind, if you raise or lower any levels here, they will reset once you power off and on the processor. It's only temporary if you need a little boost. This way it doesn't change your calibrated level settings for the next time you power up. A lot of receivers and prepros do this. And here you have sync and some tone controls. For surround mode, you can choose what the input's default sound mode is when you first power it up.
For speaker preset, you have your choice of two, which we'll check out in a bit. So that's it for main zone settings. For zone two, you can keep it powered on or off. I like to keep it on since I've got it hooked up to another TV. You can pick the default input and the default volume level. There is a tuner on board if you want to listen to the radio. Okay, now let's hop into the setup portion. For inputs, I'm not going to go one by one, but you can see here that you can specify default settings per input selection. You have things like HDMI type, surround mode, and a bunch of other things. Under preferences, you can turn the OSD on or off, or as user defined. This basically turns off the overlay if you're watching a movie. Here's turn on input and turn on volume, which I'll keep on last used. Here's a max volume limiter that I'm going to change to zero. And this is the front panel dimmer. You can turn it all the way off or keep it at full brightness. Under left display, you can specify what information shows up on the left side, and you can do the same thing for the right side. You've got options for volume, surround mode, input, full status, and bitstream. I'm just going to keep it on volume and keep the left on full status. Menu display shows the menu on the left or the right side display. OSD transparent is the transparency of the status overlay when you're watching something, so things like the volume level will be less obtrusive. And that's it for preferences. HDMI CEC you can turn on or off. And under advanced, there's a bunch of self-explanatory settings. Now under speakers, you can define your speaker size, which is either small or large. Here's your crossover slope. Here's the sub settings, which I have on LFE. For left and right sub output, I have it on dual mono since I've got two extra subs hooked up. But if you're using one or none, you can change that here too. You can also repurpose the outputs as top middle height channels. You can rename this preset here if you want. Now since Dirac Live Room Correction isn't available at the time of this video, you can adjust the parametric EQ manually. If you know how to use Room EQ Wizard, you can run the RTA and make your corrections and then import that into the RMC1. And finally, you have your distance and level settings. As I mentioned earlier, I have this set up in my dedicated home theater room. My speakers are the Arendel Sound THX11 channel setup, and I'm using the Dual Rel 1508 subwoofers. If you've been following the channel at all, you'll know that I've had a lot of top pre-pros in for review. My favorite recently was the Audio Control Maestro M5, followed by the NAD M17 V2. The two things those processors had in common was that they both had direct live room correction. They were both great without any room correction, but Dirac always seemed to open up my theater even more than normal. Emotiva is working on getting their version of Dirac out soon, so hopefully I can follow up this video once that gets released. But in the meantime, I did use this by only setting the distance and the channel levels. I of course tweaked the subs a little bit too. So I popped in a few of my favorite demo scenes, starting with A Quiet Place. This is a very dynamic mix. There's some loud moments and a lot of quiet atmospheric moments. For those of you that think only loud movies are dynamic, should watch this one. Anyways, the RMC1, from what I heard, throws my speakers back about maybe two feet from where they're physically located, meaning the sound stage seems like it's reaching outwards, making it almost seem like you're outside. This is especially noticeable in the first chapter of the movie. There is a decent amount of spaciousness inside the grocery store, and things do deepen when they go outside. In comparison, the audio control, rather than moving only a couple feet outwards, tended to sound much more transparent and seemingly disappear. Of course, I did use room correction, so I know it might be an unfair comparison, but you should always have a point of reference. 
detail and some of the subtler nuances like wind or the sand crunching underneath the character's feet wasn't quite as audible or textured from what I'm used to hearing. I'd say it's a touch more darker and more reserved sounding. Now, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of subtleties in everything that I've heard. It's just coming up a little short from the very best that I've had in here. I should also mention that since this is a quiet movie for the most part, the RMC-1 was paired with the Emotiva DR3 amp. Both of these units are fully differential, so I didn't experience any kind of noise from the speakers. So there was no buzzing or humming or anything like that. The noise floor was ultra quiet. I also felt that the amp fell on the brighter side of neutral. And I mean that it's a touch brighter than my Rotel 1590 that I normally use. The amp is also rated at 450 watts per channel into 8 ohms or 600 watts into 4 ohms, which my speakers are. And that's with all three channels driven at the same time. There was no point that I've ever noticed the amp struggling for dynamics no matter how painfully loud I had the volume. So if you're running large towers up front, I think it's safe to say that the DR3 has plenty of reserves. Moving on to one of my favorite demo scenes is the car chase scene in Chapter 2 of Power Rangers. There's full on 360 degree sound panning that happens in the lower channels here. If your speakers are properly placed, then the processor should create the illusion you're sitting inside the car with these characters as sound effects move clockwise around the listening area. The RMC-1 delivered this scene flawlessly with no breaks within the soundstage. Next up is my new favorite go-to Atmos track, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. If you want to be bombarded in every direction, then look no further. This disc is great for hearing sound movement above your head and just all around you. Just like Power Rangers, there was a clean immersive bubble of sound that just engulfs you. I didn't notice any disconnects between the lower and height channels, and dialogue was always rendered perfectly, as long as it was a clean mix. <laughs> I do just want to say again, I think when we do get proper room correction, the audible experience is just going to be even more expansive and even more detailed. I'm just basing this on what I've heard from the NAD and the audio control. But in the meantime, I'm going to place this right above the Integra DRC-R1 as far as dynamics, clarity, and immersiveness. Well, I've read all the horror stories about the RMC-1 being slow, not reading sound formats properly, having display issues, and a host of all other kinds of problems. I think it's been hailed as still in beta. Now, I'm not sure if all the other owners have just gotten themselves some faulty units, but my unit's been working almost flawlessly. I'd say it's about 95% problem free. The only issues that I've been having is using the main HDMI out to my projector and having Zone 2 go to another TV at the same time. The signal would at times cut in and out, and other times it could catch and work perfectly fine. I narrowed it down and found that I was having a handshake issue with the television. Yes, I tried different cables and all that too. Now to be fair, I've never had a receiver or a pre-pro not give me the same problems. The positive thing is that the Emotiva would actually occasionally work fine, but for the most part, I would have to yank HDMI Zone 2 out. As for the unit being slow, if I'm switching between inputs, there is a slight delay but I am using a projector so input switching has never really been a quick thing. Navigating through menus is speedy if you're changing basic items. If you're changing channel levels, there is about a two to three second delay once you make your change and back out. I think it's just the processor saving the settings. Other than that, I feel that the RMC-1 is just as quick as anything that I've had in my rack recently. So that pretty much sums up all the bugs or issues that I've had in the couple months that this has been in my system. Of course, everybody's system is gonna be different, so there might be certain things that's giving you problems, whereas my use case, everything's been pretty much great. Now there is just one thing that I'm not totally sold on. I'm not the biggest fan of this multi-directional, multi-purpose knob. I would have preferred plain old buttons and a normal volume knob. Using this thing just doesn't feel as premium as the rest of the build quality here. Again, it's just a personal preference. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. It doesn't affect the sound quality, so that's the important thing. So those are my thoughts on the RMC-1 and the DR3. As of this point in time, I don't know of any other processor that has 16 channels out of the box with the potential to expand up to 28 channels for only five grand. All the new stuff that just got announced, I think is stuck at 16 channels with a zero upgrade path. Plus a couple of them are just downright ugly. There is a couple things missing like IMAX Enhanced, Oral 3D, which I think all the pre-pros have, and DTSX Pro seems as if it might be a thing as well this year. I did ask the Emotiva folks if any of these formats would be coming, and I was told that the processor can certainly handle any new formats, 
it's just whether or not there's a demand for it. So if you want it, you might want to make your voice be heard. Now for the Dirac room correction update, I was told that they're waiting on the Dirac guys to wrap things up. So in the meantime, you'll have to do things manually by adjusting the EQ. If you've got 16 channels, then that could take you quite some time. But I am looking forward to seeing how this multi-subwoofer calibration works out whenever it does get the actual update. For myself personally, I am intrigued by the thought of owning a processor that isn't going to be outdated a year down the road. If you're the type of person that's always got to have the newest thing every year, then buying this might save you some money in the long run. Pairing it with the DR3 should definitely drive almost any speaker in your system, and amplifiers aren't usually something that you upgrade every year. So the DR3 could potentially outlive the RMC1. Well that's all I've got for now. Hopefully I'll be back when this gets the update and I can come back and give you my final thoughts. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts and experiences with the RMC1 or the DR3. Do you have a problematic unit or is everything working just as good as mine? Let us know down below in the comments. Well thanks for watching, if you want you can follow us on social media and if you haven't checked us out on Patreon yet then swing by. You can get exclusive content, some great deals on movies and audio and video gear and we're always having giveaways. Tap that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys again in the next one.